Welcome, I am the Data Lord, and this is another DeepMind 12 tutorial. Today we're going over kick drums. We're going to be discussing how to synthesize the sounds you need and then layer them in your digital audio workstation software and get some really impressive sounds. So, a good percussion sound has layers to it. So, a kick drum, which is where we're going to start, kick drum has a sub bass. A big boom, 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 you know, a really big bassy bottom end. You have a, a mid that you kind of want just kind of a funky sound that is going to give a unique character to the sound. And then you want a high end that's just a really fast click, just t -t -t -t, so that your kick drum sounds like doom, doom, doom. You know, you, you really want that uh, click at the beginning, that weird sound, and then the big thump. And you can change up the character of your kick so that you have a unique sounding kick in each song uh, by understanding those different layering principles. So the, the kick drum sounds that we have here, that's what we're working with. And this is just the bottom end that we have dialed in. So. Let's go ahead and get a fresh patch here by holding down pro prog, which is program, and the compare button. Hold down program, press compare, you should have the sound. So in order to get that tail to turn off, make sure on envelopes we have voltage controlled amplifier selected. Put release all the way up and all the way back down. And then we have... Uh, no release on that. We want sustain all the way down. And then we want attack all the way down. And all we're doing is dialing our decay. So go ahead and press the decay all the way down and press your key and just push your decay up a little bit until you kind of have this this little percussion sound, right? And that's really fast. We can pull it uh, down a little bit more by going into curves, press the curves button here, and then go ahead and dial this decay in here too. That's about good. Because if we go into low octaves here, So I don't want this to be a square wave, I, I'm going to turn square wave off. So now we just have a sawtooth. And we're really going to control, we're going to control our kick sound by cranking our resonance up and pulling our filter down. So you hear, as I pull the frequency cutoff down, because the resonance is so high, as we're sweeping down the frequency cutoff, at whichever point it's cutting off, it's making a big tonal spike. And that's where we're going to define the tone of our percussion sound. <clears throat> we're going to assign an envelope to our frequency cutoff so that we can get... Um, You, you see that general motion where the filter cutoff's coming down quickly, and because the resonance is so high, it's sweeping and getting that doom, doom. You know, it, it's getting that general shape of pitch. Uh, since I haven't figured out a way to assign an envelope to pitch, I, I'm sure I, I literally just figured it out. You can probably go into data and set the mod, but for right now, this is how I've been doing it. I'll investigate that at another time and let you know. So what we're going to do now is we are going to press VCF right here, and we're going to push release all the way up, all the way back down. Um, actually, turn curves off first. Release all the way up, all the way down. 
Sustain all the way up, all the way down. Decay all the way up, all the way down. Attack all the way up, all the way down. And then let's just pull our decay up. And it's not making much difference, but that's because we have to press the envelope right here under VCF up to whatever point we want it. So if I pull frequency all the way down and resonance all the way up, as I move the decay for my filter, the VCF uh, decay, I can get these clicky sounds here, right? And that can be used to make the click on our kicks, but we can also crank this noise level up. And you can hear we generally have the tone we want for the click. And then if we pull this resonance down, um, we kind of get the sound we want, but really we want to be dialing our pitch in with the envelope. So that this decay applies to the envelope by, I'm sorry, um, this envelope applies to this frequency cutoff filter by whatever percentage this envelope is set to. So now what we've done is we basically set it up so that we can literally just dial this envelope slider here to get all kinds of sounds that we can record into our recording software and then we can chop it up and layer them and you know stack them up to get the sounds we're looking for. You know so you want some Top end click here. We also want to record some knock in this area. We also want to record the the big bass right there. <clears throat> and that's how we're going to get our basic sounds, but we can embellish these sounds a little bit better in our effects before we record them into our software. So let's go ahead and go into effects and let's add a compressor first so we can get the volume up where we want it. So go to fair comp, um, you press effects, you go down to slot one under type, you use this dial here to dial into fair compressor and then you can press effects again to get into our fair compressor settings here. And uh, I'm going to record this part here with my phone. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to go over to our input gain. I'm going to crank that up. Crank it up all the way to 10, hear how good that sounds? Um, now we can also push this boost button on the high pass filter and it adds a little bit more oomph to the bottom in there. So now what we wanna do is go over to threshold and pull it down. The lower the threshold is, the lower the volume has to be before the compressor starts to crank the volume up. Mm, it's nice and thick, a little bit lower. Oof. Yeah, we wanna crush this baby. So you want to dial that in however much you want it, but 
Uh, I am really digging this hard compressed sound. Uh, leave it alone, leave it alone. And then outgain, so what I'm paying attention to is what um, the volume is on my on my audio interface, um, I get a red peak if it's clipping. So I'm gonna pull out gain down a lot and then dial it up to where it doesn't clip. So right there, it clips, so that's good enough for me. All right, um, so now that we have, let's go to mode stereo. I kind of want that to be, yeah, dual's fine. Same thing, 10, threshold down to four. Oof, that gets loud. Okay, and we gotta drop that. Still too loud, huh? Oof. Angry. It's my threshold, it's too hard on this one. Why that was so angry. There we go. It's finally happy. Sorry about that. Let's go into our distortion here. And saturation's good. Pull this down. We're clipping. Here the fuzz at the top, we wanna make sure we don't have that. Cool. And then for our low drive, Hardcore style stuff. Still kind of hardcore. That's useful, baby. So, that's our kick drum. So what we would do is we'd move this envelope up, get a bit of the clicky stuff, and if you want, you can pull decay down just a little bit, dial it in just to get the click where you want it. Pull it into mid. Let's get some stuff in there. 
get that nice sub base. <clears throat> and uh, then we can layer that in our software, and I'll show you that later, and compress them together in a bus and get a really nice polished kick drum. <clears throat>